yeah, this is, this is part of the fun of what I get to do for a daily basis. And my IT is uh, kind of trying to help customers will call and they'll say, how do I download my QuickBooks files? So mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm really good at knowing exactly how to tell them off the top of my head. And then other times I got to quick Google it. But yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> it happens all the time, especially with the, the quickly changing versions of the software and everything. Certain Absolutely. things are changing very quickly. Yeah. yeah. One of the things for me that I guess happened early on in my career that I was kind of blessed with is I was kind of starting to get into the IT industry at the beginning of the internet, you know, back in 1996, mm -hmm. we were still all on dial-up connections and I was probably one of the only houses in our neighborhood that had internet actually. Mm -hmm. And so a friend of mine kind of taught me to be how to be resourceful and how to be able to go on and look up information and find stuff. And this was obviously before Google, we used yeah. ask, ask Jeeves back in those days. Uh -huh. But um, it's uh, that's that one skill set has proven me well. And um, I guess it kind of brings me to the thing I actually was going to tell you is it's interesting that you grew up uh, in Egypt, especially around that area, because about the same time as we were getting the internet, I actually, um, uh, we had a paper I wrote when I was in fourth or fifth grade, I remember mm -hmm. distinctly about Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we did, you know, our research, and I think it was a uh, Encyclopedia Britannica or something like that at the time that we used for our source, but yeah. um, we wrote a paper about Egypt. And I just, I can actually remember now um, vividly um, in this paper about how we talked about how the president then was, I guess, according to our research, we'll say seemingly not a bad guy. Uh -huh. And of course, we all know with uh, the um, uh, prism of history, obviously, he was not such a good guy after all. He wasn't. Um, yeah, that's why we had a revolution in 2011. Yeah, I, I kind of followed that. It was kind of mm -hmm. the beginning of the, um, you know, I guess Arab Spring, they call it. That's um, right. And yeah, I just, I've been I've been following that kind of storyline ever since because I just find it fascinating how social media has enabled people and especially i'm really following the situation and i ran very closely um i mean it just it's incredibly um hard for me to imagine what those people are going through there mm -hmm. um i mean obviously in this country we have the ability to say whatever we want and, you know we don't have oh, that's a blessing by the way <laughs> yes yes i am incredibly grateful for um the ability to to know that not only do, am i critical of our government but i've actually applied to work for the government and you know the government considered a, a, um having me hired for them uh in another country i would never have done that <laughs> yeah, um, and so yeah that's um it just i i I'm very outspoken. I write a lot on social media and I, I'm, I'm pretty, um, a big believer in the free press. And I just, uh, it's so hard for me to imagine what it's like for, you know, somebody to, to live in another country and to be, I mean, I look at it in Russia, so many people in Russia today view the war in Ukraine as a good war and slowly the the narrative is changing as people are learning the truth yeah. but um as an american as I, I guess we're brainwashed in a separate way we're 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 brainwashed to believe that america is the greatest country in the world and that there's no other greater country mm -hmm. um and so i guess that's the thing i'm i'm always kind of constantly looking at I, I want to meet a lot of other people that can offer me some perspective on that. Um, my wife and I went to Costa Rica last year. That was my first time I ever left the country. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of eye opening for us, you know, to kind of get to go somewhere where, you know, we'd never been before where, you know, we could communicate pretty easily. A lot of people there speak English, but um to kind of be for the first time out of the country and it was kind of actually refreshing 
I yeah, thought. it's <laughs> actually when you, when you see people coming from different background or uh, or living in a different culture, um, you learn a lot. And this is something that I experienced a couple of times because I lived not only in Egypt, but in a couple of different other countries. Um, and even even if the Arab countries, for example, like like Qatar and Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, both of them eat, uh, speak Arabic, but different dialects, I would say. So sure. the, at least for me, uh, for the first couple of months, it was a learning experience where I have to learn the way of talking, um, eating, uh, greeting, um, socialization, all of these kinds of things, because um, believe me, they are really different when from the culture side effect. Uh, from the culture side, um, it's um, it, it was quite an experience. I think it built a lot in me um, in terms of resilience, um, acceptance, um, ability to learn, and and you know just um, be able to um, accept the fact that we're different in so many ways. But this doesn't mean that we have to fight over something. It's just that that. Um, like diversity is a very rich uh, aspect of any um, community um, and adds a lot to the experience of a person if you're exposed to some kind of that um, over the years. So it was not really very hard for me to travel and, and, and change my, the place where I'm living because uh, all the time I was open to the idea of learning and accepting other people um, in terms of cultures, feelings, um, ideas, everything. So I believe diversity is pretty much uh, an important part of my character, personality. Uh, I built it over the years and um, I kind of really, really, really like it. What would you say um, is something that you found, like when you came to the U.S., that you found like something that was unexpected for you? Or, and because I guess growing up, you probably had formed some opinion of what it would be like here, and then to actually come here, what what was that like for you? Yeah, I found out like the that the, the American people are really mostly friendly, so friendly. So when you go to a store or 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 something and asking for help from um, an employee or um, or something, they are smiling most of the time, doing their best to help. Which is uh, uh, you just mentioned about like the image, the American, the image of the American people in the media back in the Arab world is not really consistent with this image um so that was was one of my my first impressions that i realized was not true um from my my previous background um and it, it changed a lot because people are most of the time very friendly and you can ask you can um show weakness as well as like it's okay if you made something wrong or you just make a mistake, especially if you're working or something in a work environment, they accept failure as they cherish success, um, which is something um, makes you less stressful when you're in an, um, a work environment is that um, you're given the time to learn, to build up your experience and, and get more competent. And instead of being criticized and not feeling um, good enough. So yeah, friendly and supportive. This is what I feel um, about the um, American people. Um, that was not the right image or perspective I had before coming here. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I I feel like often um certain times I've kind of had this prejudice against certain places that I've went mm -hmm. um like when we were in Costa Rica uh, people don't tip there you know so I was kind of told before I went to Costa Rica 
don't expect good service. Like the waiters won't take care of you. People aren't mm-hmm. going to be necessarily willing to help you. But actually, I would say we had kind of the opposite, which was all the people that we encountered, I think, took really good care of us and like were really friendly. Mm-hmm. And they, down in Central America, they I kind of say it's kind of a derogatory term, but they call Americans gringos there. <laughs> um, and so, you know, natives, they call themselves ticos and, mm-hmm. and we're, we're gringos. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of embraced the gringo to some extent, I, I kind of laughed at myself and poked fun at myself to them to say, Hey, I'm a gringo. I know I'm a gringo. I'm, I know you guys <laughs> call me that. I'm okay with it. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the same as all those guys. So we'd go uh, often like to get groceries. They actually have a, they call it Maxipali down there, mm-hmm. but it's basically Spanish Walmart. Mm-hmm. So you go to this place and it, it is Walmart, but it's, it's nothing that you expect to go when you go into a Walmart. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were like going to cook some food. So my wife and I were looking for some food to cook and everything that we picked for our menu was a little different than the things like the milk. Uh, they don't refrigerate their eggs there. Um, so that was kind of shocking to me, which is, you know, obviously in America, we're used to seeing our eggs refrigerated. We do, yeah, but because if, if it is fresh, uh, it can stay out of the fridge for some time. Right. So, yeah, we right. have something similar in Egypt. Yeah, we do not refrigerate our fresh eggs. I think uh, milk too, their milk is, uh, they have their milk on the shelf. So you just buy that in a box and they don't refrigerate it. And uh we didn't drink any milk when I was there. I was okay with that. Uh, yeah, but there are like versions of the long lasting um, milk. Those ones that you can take off the shelf. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. Yeah, it's, you, I, I understand. It's called quite a different yes. view um, of things. So you talked about the friendliness of American people. One thing I guess I must ask. Uh, the counterpoint to that is is what about unfriendliness have you experienced the kind of the counter to that oh um let me tell you like um i saw all the time in the airport like you know the custom people and um um those who look into your paperwork make sure that everything is is okay sure Uh, the officers um i faced a very Horrible experience. The minute I um, reached the U.S., I was in um, uh, in JFK, New York. Um, it's um, it, I was I was coming as a student. I had uh, a PhD student. I had two of my kids with me, and I my husband was actually went there before us. So I was uh, a single mom with two kids, um, the uh, three years old and one and a half years old. And um, they they suspect something in my um, I would say my papers, and they sent me to the Homeland Security office, where I spent four hours waiting for them to look into my case. I almost uh, lo- uh, missed my my connection flight to Connecticut, and um, I left all that time because it was like. 2006 that was um where everything you know all the security measures have been raised after the um, um you know sure 11 and um they they left us they, they were not allowed to have any food any milk any water or anything so uh, literally my kids were starving and crying and and they just left us for four hours waiting for their for someone to look into the to the paperwork and say, yeah, you're okay, you're good to go, and um, it was it was horrible because I was not even able to go out of the office to get to buy them something to eat. They took all of the food. Then you know it's the it, the restrictions there that you cannot take any liquids, any food on the plane. So we probably we 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 basically didn't have any kind of snacks or or anything i was just waiting to arrive to the to the airport to buy them something to eat but staying four hours without any eating or drinking was horrible and actually i i made i I had to fight with them it's just like why are you leaving us like that just look at the paper and let us go 
um, after that, somebody was willing to help. And he said, why you are here in the first place? I like, I don't know. <laughs> I was transferred here and every all, all my papers are okay. And after that, I, I just left and have to hurry to, to run to, to, get, to get my, you know, my connection and everything. It was a horrible experience. And I believe because that time um, um, I am an Arab Muslim girl and they, they just because of that, they suspect my papers. That's all. They didn't take into consideration that I have kids and this is going to be very difficult on them. So it was not a very welcoming, you know, event. Yeah, that's um, terrible. Yes. Um, but I will tell you that this is something that I never been into again, it, but it was like, a very first shock that I had. I, they didn't have any reasons why they are inspecting my papers just because I was I am um, an Arab Muslim person. So yeah, I remember a couple of other incidents like uh, in the shop, grocery shop or something. People see me because I'm veiled, like I wear hijab, and. Sure. So some people just look at me, why, why, are you, why are you coming to our country? Go back to your country, something like that. But it's sure. not like, I, I know that those people are just like, they are not feeling well. So I don't care about that. But well, one of not, the big yeah. problems that we have in this country is, is that we are so infatuated with ourselves that we have thought that we can do no wrong. And we have forgotten that we ourselves are all immigrants to this country exactly and Somehow, yeah i i have a very small sliver of my nationality that is actually american indian so i you know from my grandfather's side we mm -hmm. we were here i was an indigenous person and our land was taken by europeans who settled here mm -hmm. and my mix my race is a mixture of norwegian and austrian now Mm -hmm. And, you know, through through um, centuries, I've become, I mean, one of the things that I, I just actually had this conversation over the weekend with some family members who I, I say, they're not my family, but um, in-law members, I, I know that they're racist. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think that they would openly probably even admit it, um, that they are racist. And, and they will look to justify their racism, you know, <laughs> however they can. And to some of their point, there, there is the argument to be made that Americans are not the only ones who are racist because there's racism amongst Asians. There's racism amongst, as you just said, within the Arabic world, there's different. That's right. We, I agree. we, we don't look at deeply enough exactly there's you know everybody hates everybody right so mm -hmm. um if we've so singularly focused on well if somebody looks different than me i'm i'm that's the easy thing to hate right um and that's the thing i was trying to explain to these people that you know they're going to be racist no matter what you say but i try to explain to people there are wonderful people of all descents right yes. um of every color and of every culture and we should never judge somebody until they give us a reason to judge them yeah and um it was funny listening to them they went over to europe and they were in england okay mm -hmm. and in my mind england is kind of the home place of all all whiteness racism yeah <laughs> They're they're really super white there, but European yeah. the, the English they were they were um they the, these people that uh, family members were getting judged by the English because mm -hmm. because the English knew that they weren't from England they knew that they were Americans mm -hmm. and I was like how could they have ever known that you were Americans and uh, sister in law goes well they didn't know we were Americans until we opened our mouth uh, yeah <laughs> oh my. <laughs> You yeah, exactly. She said it right there. But um, she she kind of got a little bit of racism the mm -hmm. opposite way. And that's what I was trying to explain to her is, is I said, you know, it's not right to do that to other people. Mm -hmm. It just, in a, you know, it doesn't feel good to you either when they visit. They said that they did not enjoy being in, in France, which I expected because, you know, typically I think people from France don't necessarily care for Americans. 
And um, they don't care for anybody. I, I lived there for um, a, a year or so um, I, um, working. I, I didn't feel comfortable. So I didn't extend my stay and I came uh -huh. back to Egypt because I didn't feel like they're not really welcoming different people. Uh-huh. It's if interesting, to, isn't it? Yeah. It's not about white or or, or like the, the color of your skin. It's about your culture. If you would like to be to stay in Fran in, in France, you have to be to embrace the French culture. Eat like them, look like them, work like them, um, uh, um feel like them, talk like them. So even even if you're really good at a different language, you have to learn French in order to be able to communicate with them because they do not allow, or they do not welcome anybody talking a different language uh, or even learning, you know, just because French is not an easy language to learn. Actually, I had a very hard time doing that, uh, but but they, yeah, they do not appreciate you until you be a, a copy of them embracing their own culture. Um, they do not welcome diversity at all. So yeah, it's not a very good place to live. I felt like feel I felt like trapped. I do not want to change to feel like I'm welcomed in a specific place. I need to be myself, and you have to accept that. But they do not. Yeah, even, that's, even when it comes yeah. to religion or anything, um, um, you're not allowed to practice religion there um, with freedom because they feel like this would affect their identity, um, their Christian identity, and they would not allow anybody to ruin that. So no, even if you're embracing any kind, any other religion, you're not allowed to, part to practice that or show it, or even show it, show any um, so sign that would indicate that you are practicing a different religion. One thing I find interesting about that is, is that they don't even understand their own religion enough to understand that they are not the first religion to worship basically yeah. what amounts to a sun god mm -hmm. and that their religion, just like Islam, just like Hinduism and other religions all share a lot of common traits that they yes. fail to consider <laughs> exactly so uh -huh. yeah it's not a very comfortable place to, to uh, com compare to the to the to the american people they are so tough yeah we've gotten the the scariest thing for me is as we've developed uh, probably too much of a christian nationalism in this country now where i think um We've pointed the finger as other areas as being too extreme, but we're starting to demonstrate some of the same extremes ourselves. Uh -huh. And you brought up the hijab. So I actually, uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to answer this question, but I, I, I asked this because my daughter uh, was wearing one for a period of time. And I explained to her, do you understand what this means? Uh -huh. And I was privy to learning a lot about other religions. So I understood that, you know, for somebody to wear one is their religion and we should respect other people's religion, but it also is a symbol of oppression of women. And, um, you know, she wore it to try to, I think, um, make her friends feel more comfortable, welcome, which I appreciate. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I didn't appreciate her wearing one, one, because mm -hmm. I felt like it was appropriation of a culture that she doesn't understand. And two mm -hmm. is, is I thought it supported oppression of women, but what to you, I mean, you, you live now in the United States and you have the ability to, to freely practice your religion. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think about that? I mean, I, you know, I just, I guess, what's your opinion of that? Yeah. Well, uh, this is something I really appreciate. I don't know if you know that or not, but we have like uh, three uh, different uh, like masjid. Masjid is our worship place um, as Muslims. So we have three different masjids in uh, um, in Fort Wayne. And this is something I really, really um, thankful for. Um, I'm wearing hijab. Nobody is, um, is looking down at me or, or feeling like I'm doing something very strange. They are 
um, accepting that. Um, I do not feel oppressed at all because he's just mentioned that it is part of my religion. Um, I am truly, I truly believe that I, that I have to wear it and I'm wearing it out of love, not out of oppression at all, because simply I am away of my, um, my family, I'm away of my country, the culture I was raised in, but I'm still um, wearing my hijab, um, trying to, to keep it. I'm not getting um, without any kind of pressure other than my love to and my commitment to my religion. Um, I uh, like what, one of the things that I am the only hijabi woman in the whole university on, on campus among the faculty. And I do not feel strange at all. On the contrary, they feel like um, everybody, like most of the people when they see me, they start asking about it. And I feel like an ambassador to somehow to my religion. Um, I try as much as I can to correct that um, misinterpretation of hijab as, um, as an oppression to women. It's not. By the way, my, my, my daughter, um, she is not wearing hijab. It's all her decision. If she wants to be a better Muslim, she can do it. But if she's not ready, she, I'm not going to oppress her <laughs> at all. So we talk about it as a preferable thing. Um, but if you're not ready to do it, because it's, it's not only a matter of how you look, it's a matter of how it's a, it's a sign of how committed you are to the rules and the commandments of your religion. Uh, once you make sure that this is um, clearly you know, visible on your, the way you're, you're, you're wearing, you're, you're looking, um, I think you should, this should be consistent as much as possible with your inner um, beliefs. So it is some kind of a reflection of what you believe inside that you can see it on the outside part. Um, I believe that you need to work on the inside level as first on your beliefs and values. And as soon as you feel consistent, you would not be, I mean, like a, a Muslim woman would not be shy or hesitant to show this on the outer, like the looking, which is hijab is part of it. Um, it's not an easy job, by the way, just taking the decision and be committed with it. Um, and it requires a lot of discipline and, and um, deep belief in that you're doing the right thing. Um, so no, I, I, would, I would disagree that it's not any it's not any kind of oppression or anything on women. It is part of our religion, and you have to believe first that um, it is good for you. And when you start doing your practicing, you will not feel feel as a burden as, at all. It's actually something that you would like and cherish um, to be part of your personality awesome well i appreciate the perspective i personally i i think they're they are beautiful i in the fact that as long as it's not doing what i described mm -hmm. and like you said it's about the religious reasons i think my daughter might have done it because she got a bad haircut to be honest with you <laughs> but okay. um it that was definitely helpful for me because i you know my wife will probably tell you i um admire anybody that has the courage of their convictions to go with what they believe in i like i said i do have respect for a lot of religions and i understand there's lots of different beliefs so i uh i'm very open-minded as as that goes into uh you know like i said if somebody is of a different religion than me that does not that does not bother me. I don't think other people should let that bother them either. But uh, certain people that I know, like as you said, render judgment, um, you know, based on things that they see. And um, I think, you know, what you just described to me, it sounds like it's, it's a very positive thing. So that's awesome. Um, you know, I, 
I, I'm glad that I asked you about that because I wasn't sure if I should ask or not because I, uh, like I said, I, I kind of had an idea in my head and I... Yeah, I, it's okay. I got, I got those kinds of questions every time, like uh, a lot of times. And I feel like, you know, as I'm answering those questions and actually learning more about myself and and my beliefs because um in, in from where i'm coming uh it's a culture to wear hijab it, somehow or this is how people see it it's when the where when the when the girl hits a certain age it's by default in certain culture you have to wear hijab um but because it's a choice I made um, with the support, of course, of my family and my culture. It was not an easy, uh, uh, it was not a hard decision to make at that time. But right now, looking at my daughter, she is almost the same age when I decided to wear hijab. And she feels a little bit um, confused uh, because she doesn't have the support that I used to have. And she doesn't have any, you know, people around who are wearing a hijab or something. Um, so just talking to her about how important it is, how it is, why it is a part of our religion uh, enlightens me because uh, it actually takes me back to the roots of our beliefs is that why we're wearing hijab. It's not something that you should take it for granted. It's something that you need to think about it, believe in it embrace it and start practicing it's 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 not an easy process if you're if you do not have you know the support uh, in the role models to look up to um it just thinking about the process and how to convince people about it how to explain it to people because like back in our countries you don't have to explain that <laughs> it's somehow uh, Muslims are majority, and hijab is part of, not only part of the religion, it's also part of the culture. So you rarely come into that conversation where somebody is asking you, why are you wearing hijab? <laughs> it's not um, um, a normal question that you uh, that you get. But when you are traveling um, to a non-Muslim country um, and you start getting this um, question so often, um, that makes you think about a good answer and also it makes you um, dig deeper in, inside your yourself and, and, and understand your motives and, and values and, and um, purposes. Um, I believe sometimes like I feel like I didn't feel like when I get you know more questions I feel like I really didn't know that how deep this is in my my soul. It's just like, would you ever? I asked myself a couple of times, like, would you ever be, um, like, take off the hijab at a certain point of time for a certain reason? I well, I no, I I'm not. No, no matter what is the reason, because it's 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 becoming really part of my my personality and my um, it's it's part of myself right now. So those kinds of questions are not bothering me at all. And instead, they, they enlighten me. They, they help me learn more about myself and my values. Um, understand who, who, are, who really I am. So no, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm glad actually, you actually asked that question. I think it's important for Americans to consider, um, to understand those things, because one thing that I didn't, really understand and you actually talked about this and you can provide a little bit more contextual detail of this is you also grew up in a very um secular i guess i hope to be the correct word and and um real uh, and uh regional religion whereas you know you may be um uh, muslim but a saudi arabian muslim is different than an egyptian muslim mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we categorically say you're Muslim and then Americans also make the, then the distinction of, well, they're, um, you know, that's the same thing as the people that are in the Taliban. Well, mm -hmm. you and I obviously know that's 
not the same. However, I think that's where the uh, negative uh, view of the hijab stems mm -hmm. from is, you know, they view the Taliban, you know, and that Islamic view as the same as, you know, a different religion. But mm -hmm. um, it, I found it fascinating because I started thinking about if you look at migrational patterns, um, if, if somebody migrates to Saudi Arabia, a country that's 90% Muslim, if you're not Muslim, you are significantly the major, minority there. Minority, that's right. Um, but then if you're, if you're Muslim and you're not from Saudi Arabia, you become a minority that is so small it's not registerable. Mm -hmm. You you set in Fort Wayne. There's three mosques. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were, they are. Yeah, you, you you had probably zero in all of Saudi Arabia. I imagine. I mean, uh, no, there are many actually. Like when um, the mosques is our worship house that is welcoming any Muslim. So okay. yeah, I do not have to have like uh, an Egyptian masjid in, in Saudi Arabia to go to. Um, it's, so, it's the, but so, I mean like the culture is different, but the religion is the same somehow. Okay. Yeah. So when, the, when we, it's not secular like we think of like Lutheran no, versus Catholic. No, no, not 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 that that that. We in like in, in Islam we have only Islam. It's okay. just like we do not have um different versions of it but i mean like uh the 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 image that they you have on taliban is not actually reflecting of true islam this is something that we also disagree with it is this is not true islam and we do not embrace it we do not cherish it we do not agree with it at all is that you force islam um on people not only on women you because women like forcing islam on women would reflect in their appearance because the way that they force them to wear um but also on on men the way that they look the way that they talk the way they work so it's just um it's just forcing islam on everybody living in certain place and islam is not was not actually um spread it by force at all. Uh, there isn't like, uh, there are many uh, things that would um, support my my idea here is that Islam went to uh, far as the Far East, there are like in Korea, Japan, there are Muslims living there. And um, we did not force them to be Muslims. They just sure. went to Islam and decided to embrace it by but but like what Taliban is trying or something similar like Taliban Daesh all of these kinds of things um like ISIS I believe uh they call it how they call it um is uh, is just they try to export that image that Islam is um is not going to be um good without uh being hard on making everything the Islamic way, and this is the way they call it, but Islam is more about relationships, uh, the way that you treat people, the way that you um, uh, like how to behave, how to act. Um, most of other things is just something that is relates you to, to your God. It's something that is so personal. You, you cannot force anybody to be good, but you can right. force them to obey the law. So they are trying to make it look like it, these are laws and everybody has to obey it uh but this is not true islam in in true islam you cannot force your daughter to wear hijab or even wear something that is so specific um th this is not the true way um of expressing islam although that this is the image that they wanted everybody like when i'm talking about everybody's like the media wanted everybody to see islam as this so they get scared out of Muslims. They feel like if Muslims are part of the community, they're gonna try to force that on everybody, which is not true. It's not true at all. Yeah, um, I've, yeah. I experienced kind of the opposite of what a lot of the, um, I guess, stereotypes are. And 
I know it's funny because a lot of the people that have that belief are Christians. Mm -hmm. And I think that they have forgotten how Christianity was spread across the world by force, by taking children from indigenous people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by killing people, by indoctrination, by conquests of, of lands. I mean, mm -hmm. Chris, Christianity has uh, convinced us that Islam is the uh, what, uh, the Antichrist, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But yet, we have done the very things that we accuse them of doing. Uh, and so I agree with you. Is this is also not about Christianity as a religion? Is these are Christian rulers who want it to spread? Uh, they just want to spread control and and they need power over people but they are this is not doesn't reflect the true christianity as a religion as well so this is an image that does not reflect religion it's just people looking for power and they just name it religious but it's not either it's Absolutely. christianity or I islam or jewish or hinduism or anything it's just Religion is nothing to do with power and rule. It's all about your personality and how you treat people. Um, it was I've, never any any any. It takes any form of, of forces. People make it look like this, but it's not true. If you're really religious, you understand that it's not true. I've become yeah. convinced that um, the way that you. Um, control a population is to divide them yes and if we can use religion which people believe to their death mm -hmm. um that we can put a divide and then we can use are you a republican or democrat and then we can put a divide mm -hmm. and then we can get people to argue amongst themselves so that the people that have all the power can go do things so we don't notice yes um i just uh, actually, interestingly, watched a, a video about um, uh, the guy shows a gun and a piece of paper, and he asks, "Which do you believe is more powerful?" Mm -hmm. Because a dictator can rule with a gun, but mm -hmm. only a stupid dictator does that. One desperate for power because somebody that's being ruled by a gun quickly realizes that the gun is the symbol of their oppression. If they kill the person holding the gun to their head they've solved the problem mm -hmm. if you if you use paper to control people and you use laws and the institutions of society money um and and you use those things you can control people very easily and um that's the thing that just uh it, it gets me about you know and I, I just this is another we had some we have some very interesting discussions when i return home where my European um, family members celebrate taking the lands of my uh, native, you know, <laughs> ancestors. But yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, yeah, that's, exactly. that's, what, that's what we do in this country. We're like, let's celebrate Jesus's <laughs> birthday and the time we took your land from you. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I grew up Christian. Um, I pretty deeply believed in Christianity for a long time until I started understanding my own religion and what I was believing and what what the origin of the religions were and once I started understanding other religions I understood exactly what was going on and that's why I kind of embrace all religions at this point because I think that every religion at the core belief has got good intent at it right of course yeah people do good give them some moral compass um is there is there life after death yes i mean you know are there angels yes are there powers beyond what we see yes we all i think we all really believe the same core principles but powers have divided us mm -hmm. because they've said well well god goes is in heaven and, and there's only one god there's not five gods well mm -hmm. How do you know there's not five gods? Maybe Hinduism, maybe Hinduism's got part of it correct. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a bunch of gods. You know what I mean? So um I I find that fascinating. I I um I love talking to people about it and I um 
I appreciate you sharing that with me because, um, you know, some people don't like to talk about religion and I, I, I love discussing it, um, not, not to attack, but to understand, exactly. you know, a lot more about it. So um, in that, I heard you mention some languages you speak, you speak more than one language, I assume. Yeah, Arabic is my native language. Um, uh, in English, of course, because this is the language I live by here. Um, I learned a little bit of French when I was living there and a little bit of German, like Deutsch, um, when I was planning to get my PhD in Germany, but I didn't. So yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but basically Arabic and English are the, um, like, my main spoken languages. Did you find it difficult to learn English or was it um, more In similar English, to... For English, no. Okay. Basically because English was, uh, is, 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 or is actually taught as um, a single language in, uh, in Egypt. So I grew up uh, uh, learning English. So it, it's actually part of our um, um, educational system there. Um, all of the uh, of the schools, uh, including uh, public schools, they teach uh, English in for, starting from first grade. So we're actually our kids uh, are learning Arabic and English at the same time. Can you just give me a second? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Sting. Hi, I'll just my 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 son get get back from school right now. So yeah, no problem. And I don't know how if you have any time constraints, but feel free to let me know if you have to leave or if you have anything that you yeah, have to do. Yeah, I think time. we do have. We can use like uh, five more minutes. Okay, well that's mm -hmm. no problem. I um I just I'm I'm pretty much got a pretty good idea um of of what I need. Um, so I really do appreciate your time and sharing. Like I said with me. Um, like I said, it's basically for me, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to um, put put something to paper um, that can kind of um, really uh, show, you know, what uh, we've talked about. And, and so um, my understanding of a foreign perspective on, uh, you know, the United States is very important for me because like when I went to Central America, I did not speak Spanish well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I've i tried to learn Spanish multiple times and I've always struggled to learn a second language. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of the world is in a significant advantage where they're teaching um, more than one language at, a, at the same time. So um, are you still there? Yeah, 